Okay, well, first of all, welcome to a very uh, interesting moment in my life, to say the least. Um, long story short, this is not prepared. Uh, this is literally just a reaction to uh, speaking to a good friend of mine who had a sincere question, I believe. Um, but that doesn't really matter. Essentially, um, this is something I've thought about doing for a long time and trying to answer questions openly and honestly, uh, but I've never really actually done it. And uh, if you saw my rig right now, it's literally a suitcase and my mom's uh, jewelry stuff, display stuff, prop by my shoe. Um, no makeup, no prep, uh, but I'm going to answer this as openly and honest as I can and uh, go from there. So let me start off with a quick word of prayer. God, thank you for this time and thank you for this moment, this opportunity. Uh, but as my good friend Rob prays, I do pray sincerely that any part of this that's not of you, that's of me, uh, let it be quickly forgotten and fall away. And if this is of you, I ask that it would actually penetrate people's hearts. Um, just help me up openly and honestly answer this question and let your will be done in Jesus name. Amen. So, uh, without further ado, essentially this is in response to the question of, um, Uzzah or Uzza, <clears throat> who in second Samuel and first Chronicles touched the ark, uh, and then God killed him and seems pretty harsh. So, uh, my good buddy, uh, who I really haven't caught up with in well over 15 years, maybe seemed to really have this as a, as a first point of, stumbling to accept and acknowledge and believe that God can be good. And I get that because there's a lot of stuff in the Bible, um, the Old Testament especially, that seems very harsh, very difficult. So I will try to stay on topic and try to answer this um, concisely. So essentially, here's my take on the situation, right? And again, hopefully led by God. If not, I doubt there'll even be a single view of this, except Chris, we we'll probably send this to you and see what you think. Anyway, uh, the point being that um, there's a lot going on behind the scenes here. There's a lot that builds up to the moment that has to be understood. So first of all, um, martial arts is something I enjoy and something that I can relate to. So I'm going to use that as an analogy. If that doesn't appeal to you, I apologize, but I'm not really sure where else to go with it. So, um, military maybe could understand too, but the idea of discipline and trusting a master, um, the idea of submitting yourself to someone that you believe can lead you where you want to go. And you believe that he's doing it for the right reasons, or she, whoever. Uh, the point being that in, in a school scenario like that, let's just say that, you know, in, in a school where I was a student and the master told me to, you know, only wear, uh, like the school, well, whatever. Let's say a master told me to only wear white. Uh, well, if I show up one day in a black uniform, it doesn't really matter why he told me to wear white. The fact of the matter is in disobeying the master's instructions. So... I would expect there to be consequences, okay? Now, there may be a real reason for the master telling me to wear white, uh, or it, there may not be a reason. There may just be his preference. Well, again, or it may be something where he is just trying to test and see, uh, are the students going to obey me? And just use that as a litmus test. So that's a possibility too. The fact of the matter is remains that if I don't wear a white uniform, I'm disobeying the master's instructions. And therefore, I should expect that dishonoring a master in his school is gonna have consequences period. So I'm either going to apologize, repent, and probably hope or hopefully be accepted again, or I expect I probably will not be welcome in that school anymore. So hope that makes some sense. Same with the military. Again, certain rules may make perfect sense. Other rules may not be there for anything more than just to test your obedience. Okay. Well, God had some very, very specific rules about the ark. First of all, uh, only certain people were supposed to carry it. Um, second of all, it was never even supposed to be put on a cart, new or old. Um, and so it's interesting, if you look at it, David is, is a great example of uh, God's grace and mercy and that God can redeem a life and do a lot more uh, through it, even after stumbling and falling. Well, I believe David was very sincere in a lot of things, and including this one. Well, he went to get the ark um, from Abinadab and his sons, Uzzah or Uzzah being one of them, and uh, I don't know that he even should have brought other people uh, to go do that. Maybe he should have had a bit of a bit, Abinadab and the sons deliver it to him. I don't know. The point is that in the circumstance, there's things going on behind the scenes that maybe set this up to be a possible failure. Well, again, it never should have been carried on a cart by uh, oxen or whatever it was. I think it was oxen that were pulling it. So the scenario is that oxen stumbled, is what the scripture says. And I'm always open to a correction and interpretation or different understanding. If I'm wrong, please feel free to comment. And by the way, if you ask sincere questions, I will respond with sincere answers. If you are a sincere troll, 
sincerely get off. <laughs> I'm not going to respond to you because it's a waste of my time and frankly yours. Um, but the whole idea is again, so here's the arc being pulled by oxen on a cart, never should have been on. And it says the oxen stumbled. Well, uh, there's a really good website I'm not going to promote right now, uh, but basically there's a really good website that actually brought up the fact that um, if you look at some of the examples in scripture, well, when the disciples were on the boat with Jesus, the boat was being tossed and rocked in the storm uh, to the point that they probably thought, and they did think actually, it was going to sink. Um, but it didn't, right? Uh, God's in control. So, you know, they said, Master, what are we going to do? We're going to drown. We're going to die. And he says, you have little faith, gets up and rebukes the wind and waves, and they just, boom, gone, right? And that's a really cool moment in, in scripture. Again, I'm not going to get off on a tangent, but the fact of the matter is, the oxen stumbling does not mean the ark was actually in trouble. It doesn't mean that uh, Uzzah or Uzzah had to actually do anything to try and prevent it or help it, right? The other thing that website brought up that I hadn't thought about that was really pretty smart, or pretty wise, I should say, um, is that uh, the ark actually resided in Abinadab's house with his sons, and that that familiarity of the ark, you know, may have actually just made him a lot more comfortable and not really considering and thinking about uh, the holiness of God and his command not to touch it or not to have anybody carry it except certain people. Well, again, the whole idea, going back to that analogy of a martial arts master, um, once you break a rule, uh, you might as well throw out the book. And the whole point of that being that all of God's prescriptions about how to carry the ark, what to do with it, et cetera, et cetera. Once you start to take, um, uh, you know, it into your own hands and make your own interpretation of scripture, it's not scripture anymore. You know, essentially it's your book. So it's not the Bible. It's, you know, the Bible according to John or whatever it would be, um, or whatever your name is. So in this situation, again, going back to the whole point is that the oxen stumbled, the ark is on the cart. And then it says, uh, that Uzzah, and I'm just going to call him Uzzah from now on, right? Um, instead of saying his name different ways twice. So Uzzah actually reaches out and touches the ark. Um, and he's, it says, I think, uh, God's wrath was kindled or his anger burned against him, and he killed him. Well, again, it seems very, very harsh. So the irony of it is this, and my friend who I talked to earlier, I'm not going to mention your name, but if you're watching this, I, I mean no projection into what you were thinking. But I was talking to another friend uh, who's a minister or pastor, and essentially was thinking about the fact that, you know, it's interesting how Scripture doesn't say what Uzzah's motivation was. Okay, but we're supposed to understand and acknowledge that God is holy, God is righteous, and even Scripture says that God knows men's hearts, right? Well, if that's the case, he knew us his motivation, and apparently it wasn't good, uh, or, or not, it wasn't pure, uh, enough to the point that there wasn't grace. So God had to, you know, God didn't have to, God decided to do that. God, God decided to kill him, fulfill uh, what he had uh, commanded Moses to write in Scripture. So, again, it's interesting how, when you think about it, we read scriptures often, we look at it, and we, we project the idea, maybe even our own hearts, onto these people and say, well, I mean, he's a good man. He tried to stop the ark from falling. Like, shouldn't that be honored? Well, we don't know that, you know? And what's ir ironic is that, you know, we're so quick to throw on the judge robe and stand and put God on trial and say, you know, well, God did this. must have been wrong. Well, I kind of think maybe sometimes we should sit in a jury and listen to the whole thing and, and make sure we are, we're trying to be proper uh, judges, if and ever appropriate, which judging God, quite frankly, is not. But the whole point being, isn't it interesting, if you really think about it, if you're honest, and if you're not, nah, you're just going to try to refute all this anyway. But if you're honest and you look at it, we are taking liberty in saying God's motivation was unjust, but us's motivation was just, when scripture really doesn't say that at all. So God, knowing us's heart, decided to do what he did. Uh, and yet, here we are trying to judge God and excuse Uzzah and say, what a cruel thing, what a terrible thing. Well, that's the problem. When you really get down to it, when you get down to the nutshell of it all, the issue is that if we truly trust our master, if we truly trust God wants what's best for us, and I do, and believe me, this is a trip. My life has been a trip, trust me. If I get into it, it would take up a whole other video, so I'm not going to, but maybe someday I'll elaborate a little bit. But my life has been a beating, frankly, for years, and I didn't get it, don't understand it in some way still. But what I will say is I'm actually finally able to be thankful for all of the trials because they've grown me to who I am. And I'm happy with that. And I have a joy and peace about that, which is great, even though some of the things that happened were not. Um, so, I'm trying to think of anything else I need to tell you or should tell you. 
yeah, I think that's enough. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you do have a comment, feel free to leave it. I'll probably respond via video because I detest typing stuff out. Uh, and just know that, frankly, anybody who knows me, I am like the anti-spiritual cliche. I cannot stand uh, just bumper sticker theology and people who say stuff just because they think it sounds good. You're never going to get that from me. So if you have a genuine question, ask it. I will give you a genuine answer to the best of my ability. I'm human. I'm going to make mistakes. I apologize. Give me this video. Trust me, no prep. Um, but I really do hope it blesses you. I really do hope it makes a difference. And I hope you can just take a moment and think about and just pray about if you feel so led and honestly ask yourself the question, am I jumping to conclusions? Am I looking at it from a skewed perspective? Uh, is it, you know, God on trial and me not being honest? I don't know. I don't know you. So anyway, like I said, hope it's helpful. Uh, I will respond if you have questions. That's it. Take care.